Hi everyone, thank you very much for joining me today. I'm going to go through uh, how to configure a Cisco access point uh, in standalone mode using the GUI, the GUI interface. Uh, it's very straightforward. So I've got an access point, a 1242 access point uh, here, which is connected to my local uh, broadband router and it's going to receive a DHCP address. What we will do is we'll, we'll configure a, a static IP address on that access point. Um, we'll go ahead then get onto the GUI and configure an SSID, we'll call it WLAN1. We'll make sure we broadcast the SSID and uh, we'll make sure there's no security to begin with. Um, just to do some testing, make sure the uh, laptop can connect to the access point. Um, we'll enable the wireless interfaces, um, check the connectivity and once everything's okay then I'll go through how to add um, WPA2 appreciate key authentication to the access point as well. Okay, so I've got my um, access point firing up here. It's booting up at the moment, so um, we'll be ready to go in a few seconds. Okay, that's nearly booted up, so just press that. So, okay, it looks like it's received an IP address. Um, the, the default password for getting to the Cisco access point is capital C-I-S-C-O. Um, it's received an IP address of 192.168.0.63, so we'll configure terminal interface BVI1 IP address 192.168.0.100. Okay, once that's done, we should be able to get onto the GUI and um, configure it via. That's, that's done. We'll just write that to memory. Put that away. Let's bring up the web browser. And then we go HTTP okay so uh, comes to ask you for a username and password so the, the default username is blank and then the password is capital C I S C O login and there we have it this is the, the main um, front GUI of the um, the home page of, of the access point uh, and you can see all the and if information is, you can see the fast Ethernet's up, but the two radios are down at the moment. Um, so we need to um, get cracking. And so first thing to do is go to Express Setup. So you click on Express Setup. Um, and it comes up with the default configuration. You have to wait a few seconds. It's, a, it's quite, it's a little bit laggy and it remembers old information first. There we go. So this is, this is what it, sh it should look like. So we've got, we're going to configure it. We're going to call that AP1. We'll give it a new name. We'll keep it static. Uh, the IP address is fine because we configured it. Put a new default gateway on there, which is 192.168.0.1. Um, you can, it's an MP community. You can leave it default if you like, but if, you, if you've got it in your live network, then you should change these. Uh, otherwise, anybody can uh, access the um, you know access point using the default six community strings, but it's good practice to change it. So just make it private one, say. Uh, everything else stays as default because we're going to configure it as an access point. I'm not configuring it as a root bridge or work bridge or anything else like that. So it's staying as an access point. So there's no other changes required. Just click on apply and it throws a little warning up saying you, you're about to change the configuration. Say OK to that. And you wait till that finishes. So that's, that's the static IP address configured. Uh, as I said, it is quite laggy, so although we've configured 192.168, it still comes up with this default uh, information, but there we go, so it's now the actual what's on the, on the access point. So the next next stage is to, we're going we're gonna to configure the SSID, so if we go back to our lab, so we've, we've done the static IP addressing and we've called it an AP1, we're going to now do the static um, wireless LAN, so if you go into Express Security and wait for that to load up so here we go so at the moment there's there's no SSIDs on on there at all um, so we're going to call this one WLAN1 and we we'll click on broadcast SSID uh, the VLAN I'm, I'm not using any VLANs at the moment so it's it's, it's, it's a default VLAN so VLAN1 so I, I'm not I haven't got a switch or anything so we'll leave that from a security perspective I'm going to leave that as no security to start off with we'll do the WPO2 uh, a little bit later on in the lab okay so there's nothing else to set so just click on apply uh, acknowledge the warning again and um, you should now have an SSID configured so there we go so we've got our SSID so it's called WLAN1 uh, and, and there's it's open in authentication at the moment and we've told it to broadcast the SSID um, so, so that's ready. Now the next stage is to enable the network interfaces. So uh, as I showed earlier in, in the home page, 
um, you, you can see that the Ethernet, uh, the fast Ethernet interface was up, but the, the radios were both down. So we need to in enable the radio interfaces. There's several ways of getting to this particular uh, section where you want to enable the radio. You can click on that if you like. You can click on network interfaces. Um, so if I'll just show you the network interfaces way as well. Um, so once you get into that, so it tells you there. So there's the radio. It's disabled and down at the moment. There's the other radio. There's the Ethernet. Um, so you can either click it here or click here. So there's several ways of getting to that point. But let's just click that. So now this this part is is pretty straightforward. But as I said, the the, the GUI is a little bit laggy. I, I prefer using CLI, um, but you have to bear with it. So click on. So once you click on this, you've got the main settings here for the radio. So this is the G uh, radio. And it tells you the operational data rates and everything, uh, and the frequencies. So we're ready to go. And click on settings, um, and you just have to wait for it. Really, it's um, it is a little bit um, slow. So as soon as that comes up, um, we should be able to enable our radio. And you see, it's, it's whirling away. So it's trying to get to. It. Here we go. Now at this point, you need to make sure you wait. You shouldn't start clicking buttons, otherwise it's going to get a little bit confused. You need to wait till this whole page has loaded. And there we go. Once that disabled line comes up, it means it has loaded. Uh, whether it's enabled or disabled, one of those comes up, it, it, it's done, right? And these data rates change as well. So, so the next stage is basically straightforward. You need to enable the radio. It's going to stay as an access point, and everything else you leave as default. You don't need to touch anything. Um, and then click on apply and then this gives you a warning message you click on OK again so at this point our radio has been enabled just need to make sure that it click when it comes reloads it comes up here as enabled um, as I said it will come up uh, you have to bear with it there we go so it's that's that's done and dusted so we just if we have a look at our uh, network interfaces now while that's loading I should be able to show you there, the wireless LAN has just popped in as well. Okay, so there's there's your wireless LAN all enabled, connected, and if we look at the the, the wireless connections, we can connect to that right now. So um, let's have a look at the um, settings here. So go to wireless LAN, we connect, and that's connected immediately. So if we look at the advanced options. There we go. So it's received an IP address of 192.168.0.25. The DNS is 192.168.0.1, and the default gateway is, is that also. Okay, so so we've now successfully configured our SSID. We've successfully enabled the radio. Um, the final part of this lab is to enable the WPA2. Right. To enable the WPA2 is uh, again really straightforward. Um, the, the first thing you need to do is to go into the security section. So if you click on security, um, again, a bit laggy, but there we go. So here's security. And then the first thing you need to do is go into encryption manager. So once the encryption manager comes up, um, we should see some, some options. So some options for security. And this is the 802.11G radio. That's what we are configuring. I've only enabled the G radio, but if you're doing the A radio, then you obviously you'd click on this bar but we, we're doing the G first and and the main thing to do is to click on cipher and then on here you do AES CCMP so that's the encryption standard that we're going to use um, everything else leave it leave as default okay so um, we apply to all another warning message and you say okay to that just need to make sure that that does accept it so if we wait for that to load up um, and if you click on Cypher, it should say AES CCMP. It's important that's, that's set correctly, okay? Sometimes if your um, GUI is not behaving properly, you, that not might be set might not be set correctly. So so now now we've done that. The, the next the last final stage is to go into the SSID manager. So we click on the SSID manager, and any moment now our WLAN should come up as well on here. So as soon as, as soon as the WLAN comes up, you click on WLAN, right? Um, what, this tells you what the WLAN is, any VLANs or anything like that, and what interfaces as well. So this, this now covers both interfaces, okay? So straightforward, we, we work our way down and 
to the client authentication authenticated key method and here you put mandatory you enable the WPA and then change that to WPA2 and now you just enter your key so this time I'm going to put a password in there so let's go capital C I S C O one two three four five okay and that's all you need to do once that's set up you scroll all the way down and click on the, the apply button here please note that there's a second apply here as well we haven't done any changes to that part all we've done that's for guest guest SSIDs but I've, I'm, I'm doing the main SSID you click on apply and say okay once that's refreshed we should now try and reconnect um, our access to that to the access point uh, I'm currently connected to let's just go to my network settings I'm not connected to anything so we should be able to go to that and if we connect to that it's asking for your key capital C I S C O one two three four five and next yes and there we go it's connected so if we look on the advanced options and it's received the same IP address because it's the same interface so it remembers them but um, that works that's great so if we just now go into our command prompt and do a quick ping test there we go excellent so and then we can, should be able to do the web browser as well and go to Yahoo yep that's working fine look at the news brilliant thank you very much for listening hope you found that useful and thanks again